Alright, hello and welcome back to my 2.5D RPG in Unity tutorial. Today we're going to start off with uh, sort of like saving and loading the game, which obviously for an RPG is quite the uh, complex task because there's so much shit you got to keep track of. But we'll try our best here, and it's going to be split into three, uh, either two or three parts. This first part is going to deal with. Uh, Actual taking the data from the world, you know, like positions, inventories, items, shit like that, and turning it into a format that we could easily write to a file. And then eventually next like next episode we'll be reading from that file and loading it back into the game. So yeah. So first off, a quick demonstration. So here you'll see we have a load of serializers that I've written. Uh, these basically just read in like from scripts in the world. And we'll just create a string based on that data of all the information we want to store. So if I press T, just as a debug thing, we'll see that all right, this first one's container. So basically what this does for containers is it will oh shit. Should I done that? Okay, so basically it stores the container's ID. So you'll see container underscore PDC zero is the ID. And then that is split by a semicolon. And then it's just got a list of all the names of the items in that container. So bread, 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 antidote, bread, 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 antidote, water, antidote, bread, assault rifle, then so on, so on. Uh, the reason we split by commas is we can just use string.split and then pass in a semicolon as an argument. I may have just said commas before, sorry. And we can basically just split a string like by that uh, semicolon. So basically it'll just give us the items and the ID and no semicolons. And then we can work from there to create these items in the world or add them to, to the right container or something. Uh, we've also got stuff like this. So I've got item serialize. So this one is a bit different to the container one where it will just uh, serialize individual items that are in the world. So if I just open the scene view, you'll see that there is a, what is this? A bread we can move. See it's bread here. And if you go back to the serialize, you can drop so that'd be that'd be counted under items rather than container. And if you go back to where is the sorry, serialization controller, we'll see that uh, for all the items in the world, the first one is assault rifle. It will serialize its rotation, or position, sorry. So it's a 12. 0.2 minus 0.3 minus 0 0.3 and 0, 0 and its rotation is 0, 0, 0. And I don't know what the last bit of a quaternion does because I'm not that good bit. I just use quaternion.euler to make him, but whatever. So yeah, so basically it just stores the item name, its position, and its rotation. And again, for the player, we do some a similar thing. We do the scene that's load, the player's loaded in. The position the player's at, the player's rotation. Uh, we have just a break for stats, so this would be the other stuff from the uh, like the health, uh, max health, any effects like being poisoned, bleeding, whatever, on the player. And finally, we've got the uh, health and max health, and since we don't have any effects, we don't have anything here. And again, NPCs, it does a similar thing, but it sort of combines the previous ones. So you'll see we've got the NPC idea here, uh, we've got it whether it's not if whether it's dead or not. Position, rotation. Uh Christ knows what that I think oh that's the that's the action, I believe. And then we have the ID again because of the container, because we're basically using the same method as the container, but storing it in the string. So we will uh just like go through all this. These are all the items that the that the NPC has. And then finally, we get another break here for the stats of the NPC. So we'll see that it's got 100 health out of a maximum of 100 and no actual effects. And we also have a new thing, uh, Object ID Manager, which I'll go over in a second. And that's basically the principle of it. We wanted to convert data uh, or the world into a form we can write to a file and then read from again to recreate the world. So yeah, let's have a look at how we did this. Okay, so first off, one of the uh, more kind of necessary things we needed was a way to uniquely identify uh, objects within the game. So if we'll look at the NPC here, we we'll see that they have a new script called Object ID, and we've just got a base ID here set, so it's PD0, so 
we are in the plague desert scene, so it's plague desert NPC zero. I'll just go to the scene. And I believe the player has that as well. Yep, the player has just uh, its own ID player, and I think containers do as well. Yep, plague desert container zero. Uh, so basically, with the RPG, uh, we'll need to uh, uniquely identify stuff for whether we're trying to keep track of like whether quests have been completed. You know, like if you're trying to assassinate multiple NPCs, we'll need to keep track of which NPCs have been assassinated in Witchtown, and that is why we need unique IDs. So we'll just have a look at the script for them. Uh, first off, it's, it's pretty simple. Basically, we have a public string for base ID. Now, the idea is that uh, you should set this uh, on your own. Like, you should set it in the scene rather than letting it get generated so you know what it is and can keep traffic of it but just in case uh, on star if there isn't a base id set it will just uh, generate a random one uh so basically it just adds the uh, scene name to a random number between a thousand and ten million uh so chances are it will be a unique value that's pressed in it's given so we could uniquely identify uh, a, a un an npc or an object if it does have a uh, even if you have not given it an ID by mistake. And then finally, we have a string to get my ID. So basically, we just have a starting value. And then we add uh, a check for what what type it is. So if the uh, game object is, has an NPC script on it, then we just add uh, NPC underscore to the start. And if it's a container, then we add container underscore to the start of the base ID. And we just return that as the... Uh, value so yeah and for all the object ids we need a manager which basically just allows for access to all the object ids and we can like say plug in all right i want to find object id and we'll just pass in the string and then we'll go through all the ids itself and return that for you so that's what that is uh first off we're a singleton for it so I just have a static object id manager me and if me equals null, we set this to we sent to this, and we don't just try and load the stuck game object. So that would basically mean if we transition to another scene, this object would stick around, like we did with the player. Uh, otherwise, if there is already a uh, an object ID manager in the world, we don't need another, so we just destroy it. Uh, and then on start, we just refresh the IDs for all the IDs in the scene. Uh, this basically just finds all the objects of type object ID. Simple. And then to get an ID, we basically well basically we just get the game object attached to an ID. Whereas we pass in the ID and we go through each of the object IDs in the world. Or IDs in world in IDs in world. And we get if the object's ID contains what we've passed in. So you might pass in uh like player, oh, sorry, oh, I don't know. Uh, that'd probably be a better example. If you passed in PD0, you'd get that NPC, but you could also just pass in a like, container to get any container or something. And then that will return the game object to you. But if they can't find it, they'll just return them. And we don't need an update function there. Uh, yeah. And we've also had to make a couple of changes to like quests and that. So they can use IDs. So. First off, for objective base, we've got a new virtual string, which is used for mainly for the serialization, where it will get quest IDs. Uh, this is basically just to return any uh, sort of IDs that might be required to complete the objective, you know, for NPCs and whatnot. And we just have an example here that I've got of the objective for killing someone. So basically, we have a game object target and a public string target ID. So if the target is null on start, then we try and get the uh, target by its ID. So we use that object manager ID, object ID manager, sorry, to uh, get the target. And we override get quest IDs to return just the target ID. So yeah, that's how that works. And again, like if you were wanting to kill multiple people, 
you could just like return the IDs that don't need killing or that haven't been killed when uh, the game is saved, and then oh, words are escaping me. Uh, then when you reload the game, you just load, uh, just search for the IDs that haven't been killed that were written, and then you could just ignore all the other ones that were already killed. So yeah, that was uh, the IDs. Uh, just one quick amendment for like the objectives, because I know I will have to add a, uh, a sort of a condition. So say like if the uh, target ID wasn't dead and it had been loaded, but it wasn't in the scene, I'll have to add a condition to that to like maybe find out where the last one is or have a sort of global list of all IDs, whether or not they're in the scene or something like that. Yeah, I've forgotten about it, but it's just something I'll have to do for next time. So yeah. Uh, and next up, we'll get onto the serialization controller, uh, which is basically just a manager for all the different serializers that we have, which pertain to different components like containers, items, player, whatever. So yeah, so it's got a singleton for it. It's got a list of all the serializers we have. And it also has a uh, pub, two public gyroids. One is called split and one is called comma split. Uh, basically what these are, are just... Uh, uh, where is it? Serialization controller. Uh, basically, what, what they are are just uh, arrays, well, char arrays with one character in each. So the split has just a semicolon and comma split just has a comma. We need these because uh, we're using data.split. We'll be using data.split to uh, sort of like break down these strings we're creating so we can extract the data from them. But to do that, uh, for some reason, we need to have it as a char array. array. I'm, I'm not sure why it has to be a char array and not just a char or something like that. And I couldn't remember the syntax to create them in code, so I just created uh, public ones here. And that is why we use it. And the serialization controller basically just has uh, an update, so it'll call this uh, test serialize on each of the uh, serializers. <laughs> just so we can see that it is writing all the necessary data to the strings. And finally, but basically just like a, this basically just parses vector freeze from how we are serializing them as players. So first off, we take the string data. So uh, basically what we're passing in is what if you just do a vector free dot uh, to string. So it'll basically do uh, 0, 0.0, I should probably come this uh, 0, 0.0. Uh, one point zero, comma, oh, and close bracket. That is basically what will be passed into this method, and similarly for quaternion dot parse, uh, parse rotation, basically. Uh, and what we do here first is we use data dot replace to replace the opening brackets with nothing, so we just get rid of it. Then we replace the closing bracket with nothing again to get rid of it. Um, I'm not sure why we can't just call data.replace with that, but we have to actually assign it to data again. I'm not sure why, but we do. So just keep that in mind. And then we just debug log data to make sure it's not. Nice. And then we uh, break up the... Uh, th so basically, once we've got past this line, all we have left is the uh, three numbers split by commas. So then we use data.split uh, to create a string array with all the three numbers. So basically that'll just give us, uh, oops, done that wrong. Uh, that'll basically just give us the three numbers in a string array, using data.split well, using the comma split because it's separated by commas, not semicolons. And from this, we can literally just call float.parse for values 0, 1, and 2, because there'll only be three values. And then we store them as an X, and then we're going to return a new vector free with X, Y, and Z. And that is how we will like be parsing data and stuff. Well, basically, that's the more complex one. Uh, for like items and shit, we'll just be passing that into like the item database, and it'll get an object, and we'll instantiate it at whatever position this throws back, and stuff like that. And again, it's a pretty much identical thing for Quaternion, except we return Quaternion.Euler. Okay, uh, next up, go on to the container serializer. We 
don't actually need a static container serializer, so I'll just get rid of that. Uh, I've got a list of output strings. That is just purely for debugging, so you can see that how it works. Uh, test serialize, basically just to call serialize containers, and it will just write out uh, parse data from string, the first element of the output strings list, just so, again, we can see that it's working. So first off, it will uh, reset uh, set output strings to be a new list of strings. Uh, it will find all the containers in the scene and store them in an array, and it'll just, for debugging, it will output the length, but we don't need that, so we can get rid of it. Then it will go through each of the containers in this array. If the container is not the player container, because the player inventory is done separately, uh, it will get the object ID of the uh, container and store that. And then if the object ID of the container doesn't contain NPC, because remember when we went to object ID, uh, if this .get component NPC is true, then it will start the ID with NPC. But if it doesn't have an NPC, then it will start and it has a container, then it'll start with an uh, container. And since I know NPCs both have an NPC script and a container, but since we're checking for NPCs first, then it will always get this. It will always start with NPC. It won't do the uh, container. Uh, so next up, it will to create a string inventory, which basically just has the ID and a semicolon to split it off from the actual inventory contents. And next, it will call this serialized container method with the actual container itself. And what the serialized container method does is it takes in a container. Actually, wait a moment. CID. Oh, sorry. I've not I just realized this. I'm not actually needing this. Uh, I don't need the uh, container again. My bad. So, yeah, sorry. Just realized that was a bit redundant because we're doing the same thing twice. Uh, yes. So, basically, what we're doing is we're getting the string inventory and we're basically going through each item in the container, adding the item name to this string and then adding a semicolon after it so we can separate it from uh, each other item. And then we return that string and then... Oh, my, oh uh, plus equals. Uh, serialized container. Actually, sorry, I know this is bad practice to be doing this, but I'm actually going to get rid of the, the whole... No, I'm not. Sorry. Sorry, I'm just being stupid. Uh, plus equals... Yeah. I'll just keep it like that. It'll work. Fine. Trust me. Okay, so... And again, this parse data from string method that we use basically just takes a string in and will split it by the semicolon. So as we saw in the uh, inspector, I've made an error. Where have I made an error? Me. Okay, I probably did need the fucking serializer shit. Okay, let's quickly add that back in because I'm forgetful. All right, I mean, no, where is it? Uh, I'll just change that, so... Uh, seria... no serialization controller. Dot me, sorry. Dot me dot uh, series dot serialized container. Yeah. That work and there's somewhere else that I need to replace that because we got rid of this realizer. And we should be able to do that. Yep, that works fine. Sorry. Sorry, simple like that, but I shouldn't make changes while I'm recording, but yeah. So yeah. Uh next up we have an item serializer. Which again probably doesn't need the fucking singles input. I'm not gonna make a mistake of uh, getting rid of it. So what it does, uh, test serialize again, just calls serialize items and parses data from strings just so we can see that it works. 
it will basically just get uh, it will set item serialized to be a new list of strings and then get all the items in the world so it'll find object type item. Uh, sorry about that. And what we have is for each of the items, if the uh, item or if the game object of the item is active in hierarchy, so basically when we're adding an item to a container or someone's inventory, we set um, them to be not active and a transform uh, or the parent to be the player or whatever object they were added to, so they follow it around. Uh, if it's not in a container, then it will be active in the hierarchy. So we actually want to store that item so we don't clone inventories or whatever. So basically, we just take the item name, store that, add a semicolon, then we get the position, uh, add that, add a semicolon, we get the rotation, and add a semicolon. Finally, we combine all three of those. So we've got the item name, then its position in the world, then its rotation, and then we add that to the list of items. And then again, we can just uh, split it to parse all that data out again. Okay, uh, what else? There was one thing that has just slipped my mind. So I'll probably mention that in a bit when I remember. But yeah. And again, next is the player. Uh, player has a separate inventory stri uh, string for its inventory contents and the player data is basically just all the other data that the player has. So first off, uh, we just find the player game object. And, and first thing we store is the scene that we're loaded. So we check this to know what scene to start off in, in the game. Next up, we store the position of the uh, player and add a semicolon again to split it and a rotation and again to split it. Uh, and then stats, so we just call the serialization controller dot me dot hums seri, which is basically just human stat controller serializer, and that will serialize all the data of the player stat controller and then return that from the stats. Then finally, player data is just all that combined. And then for player inventory, we get all the, uh, we just basically get the container serializer and use that same serialized container method on the player's inventory. And that is where we saw it. Uh, I've just realized we also need to do, uh, I've not got anything for like weapon controllers, have I? So I will add that as a to-do for a serialization controller. Uh, so yeah, so we'll have to remember what kind of weapon uh, the player has or an NPC has. So sorry about that. That'll be in the next episode. Uh, yeah, and again, this just debugs and splits it so we can see it in the inspector. Uh, so yeah, next up is the NPC serializer, which pretty much does the same thing as the player serializer, apart from a few, well, a few differences, obviously. Uh, first off, it gets all the NPCs in the world, goes through all the NPCs, Starts with the object ID, then says if the NPC is dead or not, it will store either dead or not dead. And then it stores position, rotation, uh, all the items in its container, its current action. So currently we only have four actions, but you'd have to expand this if you have more. So if it's sort of like follow player, roam map, hunt player, or none. Uh, sorry about that again. And then finally, we serialize its stats and we store all this as one string. And again, we have the container serializer. No, what was it? Uh, no, sorry, it's in the stack here. It's uh, the, in the stack serializer that we have the uh, breaker, which I'll, go, I'll get onto in a minute. So yeah, that's quests. And yeah, so that's basically just uh, combining it all into one string. Next up, for the quests, we basically just go through each of the active quests in uh, the quest display GUI. And uh, actually, before I do that, uh, I basically uh, added a, where is it? Global quest store, that's it. Uh, basically, we just need an object that stays, basically follows the player throughout all the scenes and 
we'll have a reference to all the quests, whether they're active or not, just so uh, we can reference them when we're loading and saving. But that has not been implemented because well, we've only just got the base here now, so this will be more used next time but I, uh, when we're loading, but I just wanted to have it in now. Okay. Uh, next up, so sorry, back to quest serializer. So it goes through all the quests that are in the that the player has started. It will store the name and a semicolon, uh, the current index, so that'll be the current objective that hasn't been completed. And if the quest is selected, then we'll just grab the quest counter of the quest base. And otherwise, we'll go through each of the objectives in the quest and see which ones are done and which ones are not. If it's done, we increment it, and then that'll be the current index will be whatever we found from that. And then, like I showed you before, uh, quest base now ha objective base sorry now has this uh, get quest ID is that should be objective. I should refactor for that now. Refactor rename get objective. Get objective IDs. There we go. And that'll have to be saved as well. Uh, basically, what this does is gets all IDs for whether it be NPCs, containers, whatnot, that will be relevant to the current objective. And it will store them as well. So, as you were, say, killing, <coughs> killing NPCs, you'd only return to the ones that were alive. So once the quest was reloaded, when you uh, load the game again, it would uh, swear only look for the alive NPCs because the dead ones are already dead. Well, you could just return them all, and based on like the stat controller, it'd be a bit the stats that we store in for each of the NPCs would be able to work out. It'd be able to work out itself whether they were dead or not. Yeah, so your call. I'll probably add like another example for like multiple, having multiple IDs and an objective. Just as like a uh, example, that'll be next time. And then again, we just store all the IDs, and we can finally we combine them, and then we add them to the serialized quests, just so we can actually see what the fuck's going on. And find, again, we have a just a display thing, so we can see that we can split the data and start to reparse it next time. And last but not least. The human stack controller, serializer. <clears throat> Sorry again, three burps in a row. Uh, this basically just takes all the stats, so thinking health, uh, effects, so say like if the player is poisoned or bleeding out or whatever, then we just add that as a string, and then next time we'll write a class that will be able to add that effect when the game is loaded, if it is in the file. And it will set all the health and stuff, and the yeah, opportunity will be good. So yeah, that was uh, that was serialization. I'll just go quickly show you how show you all in action. So if we press T, we'll be able to see that these all get populated. So it's found a container, it stored its ID and all the items. It's found items in the world. It just stores the item that's there, its position, its uh, rotation. Stuff like that, and again, you can see here we can split it by the semicolon. I get I can also uh, do the player, and again, we can see that the player doesn't have any of an inventory, so that's why that's blank. And um, we can see the player is in the plague desert, it's at position 11.6, 6.20, rotation of 000, it's got 999 out of 999 health, like blah blah blah. Got NPC serializer, there's only one NPC, but their ID is PD0, they are not dead, they are position minus 4.7, 2.9, uh, you get the idea. And they have a sort of rifle, bread, water, 100, 100 health. I've um, got all the object IDs in the world, all four of them. And we'll see, we've got two quests active at the moment, which both have a index of zero, because we haven't completed the first objective. And finally, we've got a serialization controller and our human stack controller serializer. Which doesn't have any data in it because it's only called from NPCs and players. So yeah, that was... Uh, 
that was uh, serialization part one, where we have uh, converted all our sort of in information world, you know, like transforms, inventories, stuff like that, into a format that we can write to a file and then read from again and load the scene as it were previously. So yeah, uh, cheers for watching. Uh, I'm also just going to play my game here. Loud or Quiet is a sort of top-down shooter which is available on Steam now. If you want to support the channel or you like games like Hotline Miami or Payday or something, go check it out. The link will be in the description. And yeah, and check out all the other shit in the description. There's my links to things I've done on Itch.io, like the Hotline Miami clone thing and whatnot. And yeah. So if you have any suggestions on things I might have missed for serialization, because it's quite complex, so, you know. I probably have missed something because I realized I've missed, I've not serialized the weapon controller just yet. Then please don't hesitate to put in a comment or if I'm wrong. And yeah, cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and goodbye.